I didn't pick this reflection, but I thought it was very timely. Uh, uh, Mr. Rockefeller said, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. And the reason why I like this one is because we did a lot of good things in FY18, uh, okay? Meaning last year. We did a lot of good things. We made a lot of improvements in a number of areas from safety and quality. Certainly our operational performance improved, so we did a lot of good things. Um, but I'm not satisfied, and I know you're not satisfied. So we're on a journey to greatness, and that's why I thought this was very timely. All right, moving on. So about three weeks ago, I sent out in our employee newsletter. By the way, how many of y'all read the employee newsletter every week? Okay. We're constantly searching for ways to communicate, this being one of them. Well, obviously, the employee newsletter would be another one. So I encourage you to read that. Uh, but about three weeks ago, in the employee newsletter, I had set forward uh, the four initiatives that we're going to be looking to accomplish this year. And they represent these things. Uh, living our mission metrics. We have about nine of them in total, but these four are really where we're going to focus uh, hard this year. The first one up here is employee engagement. <coughs> That's you all. Okay? We want to have a high level of employee engagement. And Eric's going to talk a little bit more about that. That's not just about how administration and managers engage with you. It's how we engage with one another as well. Okay? So that's number one. Number two is quality and safety at the 75th percentile. Patient satisfaction, or as we will refer to it as our patient's experience here uh, when they come to our organization. And the last one is operating effectiveness or our EBITDA. All right? And so we're going to touch on all of those very briefly this morning, and then we're going to turn it over to Heather from there. Okay? All right. <coughs> Eric. <coughs> Sorry. This isn't working, but I guess you can hold it anyway. It's not okay. <laughs> if this comes off, just give me the thumbs up. All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. All right. So Monty's telling me I've got to speed up my uh, pace here a little bit. This is the fifth one of these that we've done. These are some topics that I'm personally very passionate about, so I think we could really have an entire town hall meeting just about the topics I'm about to share with you. But we're going to keep it pretty brief and high level this morning so we can turn it over to Heather for the things that I know you guys really want to hear about with some of the benefit changes. And in future town hall meetings, uh, we'll be able to spend some more time on these things. So, uh-oh, we lost it. I got it, I got it. All right. Okay, well, while he's pulling that up, uh, everybody's got in your packet I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to explain exactly how to read this thing today. Again, I'm going to keep it kind of high level. Uh, and in Livingston and St. Augustine, you guys also have this color-coded sheet uh, that's specific to your facility. So Mommy mentioned on the quality and safety uh, areas, arenas, we're trying to get to the 75th percentile, all right, for our performance in those areas. If you look at this sheet whenever we get it back up here on the board, uh, you can see uh, how we're doing in those areas as of our baseline and first sort of report card that we got back, all right? So just quickly, green is good. Green means we're already there. We're at the 75th percentile or better, and we want to maintain that performance. Blue means we're almost there. We're above the 50th percentile. We're doing pretty good, uh, and that's that's good performance, but we're trying to get it from good to great, like Monty mentioned with uh, Mr. Rockefeller's uh, uh, quote there. Red means it's an area that we still have some opportunity in, okay? So in the quality arena, we're looking at mortality and readmissions. Uh, Livingston and St. Augustine are already above the 75th percentile. They're at the 83rd and the 92nd, respectively. Here in Lufkin, as of our most recent uh, rolling 12-month percentile, we're at 68.2. So we're really close. We're almost there. Okay? Microphone's good? Thank you, Sean. All right. Um, so that, that's good work on that behalf, and um, we're paying attention to the areas that we have uh, some work to do there as well. <laughs> on the safety side, the things that we're measuring are hospital-acquired infections, biopsies, CAUTI, surgical site infections, MRSA, C. diff, those kind of things, and our patient safety indicators. You'll hear them referred to as PSIs, all right? And there's a whole list of those things on there, iodogenic pneumothorax, pressure ulcers, um, post-op sepsis, things like that, all right? Uh, again, uh, in Livingston and St. Augustine on the most recent 12, rolling 12 months, they're at about the 83rd and the 100th percentile. Uh, and here in Lufkin, we're right at the 61st percentile. So we've got 
they've got great schools in Livingston and St. Augustine. Here in Lufkin, uh, we're doing good, and we're going to be moving those in, in that direction. There's a, uh, we, we've implemented right at the end of August what we call our Living Our Mission Metrics meetings. And some of you may have seen your directors uh, or other leaders in your department disappear on Tuesday mornings at around 9.30 for about an hour. And we've got this checklist of everything that's on these Living Our Mission metrics, uh, as well as some others that are get reported out on our LeapFrog or CMS Five Star reports. And every single week, we're going through this entire list and we're saying, did any of these things occur in the last week? If any of those things occurred, that maybe kind of stops. We talk about it, we figure out what happened, and we're trying to put things in place very quickly, immediately, to prevent it from happening again. Two things uh, that we're hoping to get out of these meetings, and we're already seeing some fruit. In the past, if there was a pressure ulcer, for example, we may have been aware of it on that particular unit, the quality department may have been aware of it, but it wasn't getting reported for like a month or two out until everything got through coding and documentation and the national report came out, right? So it was very siloed and there wasn't a lot of awareness around it. In this meeting, we're being very transparent, very open about things that are taking place. We don't have to wait for it to come out on the report because the folks who represent the nursing units and other clinical areas are able to say, yes, this happened in the last week, and here's why, and everybody in the room is aware of it, and it's, it's information that we can break, uh, bring back and spread around the organizations. They started doing these uh, about three weeks ago in Livingston as well, uh, and we've already had a lot of great catches out of this. You guys are doing a fantastic job. We're going to see... I believe, I know we're going to get all of these reds on this quality and safety areas to the 75th percentile. There's just a lot of engagement and a lot of excitement about the things that we're doing there. Um, on the next slide, patient experience. Monty mentioned, you know, we hear we refer to this a lot of times as patient satisfaction. I don't like to call it a patient satisfaction score. When you're looking at our HCAPS questions, there's literally only like two questions on the entire survey that ask a patient whether or not they like this. All right, everything else is really process driven, it's really communication driven. They're asking the patients how often we did specific things to inform them about their care. All right, it's very, very important. Hospitals that do very well with the HCAP surveys directly correlates to their performance in uh, the quality and safety arenas as well because we're informing patients about things they need to do to take care of themselves. Uh, we're following up on our patients while they're in the hospital more often and we're preventing adverse events as a result. All right, it's very, very important work. Again, we're trying to get to the 75th percentile. And there's two ways that we're really looking at these. Uh, if you could drill down into just the specific parts of the, uh, of the survey process. And Lufkin scores here at the bottom of your pages in this room, uh, month year to date, and Livingston and San Augustine have them as well. But the overall composite percentile here in Lufkin, now we're up to the 51st percentile. Uh, that's really good work. When we started these LOM meetings, in uh, late August, we were in the low 30th percentile. So we've already moved this, you guys have already moved this 20 points in about two months. That's really, really good work. All right, Livingston's at the 37th percentile and St. Augustine's at the 87th. We also look at likelihood to recommend. All right, likelihood to recommend is an important uh, metric for us because it speaks to patient loyalty. When they came to us, did we meet their expectations? Did they have a good experience? Did they tell the friends and neighbors that this is a good place to come receive care? All right, we want to be in the 75th percentile there as well. Right now, we're at the 66th, so we're getting there. Livingston's at the 9th, and St. Augustine's at the 99th. Uh, another important thing to point out is that when we, these surveys are reviewed and analyzed, they look at them and compare us our organization to other organizations across the country and in the database based on what is referred to as the top box score. All right? So every question on the survey has uh, a, a choice of answers. Right? And most of the questions on the survey ask the patient, did such and such occur always, usually, sometimes, or never? All right? We're looking for the always. Always. Doing the right thing at the right time every time. Right? Always. Usually is considered a positive answer. So if you're looking at this and you look at the, like the July through October columns, what you're seeing there, those numbers represent the top box percentage. Okay. If you see one that says like 60% top box, 
then you immediately might think, well, the other 40% of our patients have a negative impression of what we're doing, and that might feel kind of icky, okay? But that's not the case. When you really drill down into the numbers, by and large, we're getting 93, 94, 95% overall positive responses, okay? So the, the, the task is to get those good, those good answers, and just move them up the ladder one rung to the top box, all right? And we're making a lot of progress here. In the LOM meetings, uh, one of the things that we discuss are, are certain things that we would like to see taking place out on the, the floors primarily. That's where our patients spend the majority of their time uh, is on the nursing unit. So we're talking about bedside shift report, uh, hourly nurse rounding, uh, nurse leader rounding on patients, cleanliness, were there any complaints or grievances from the unit over the last week, whiteboard utilization. All of these things are just sort of fundamental best practices that hospitals across the country that do very well with all of this stuff, also do those things very well, okay? We're trying to get those implemented and hardwired here in our organization as well for the benefit of our patients. Uh, we also look at uh, ER satisfaction scores. Uh, again, uh, same situation there. These uh, percentiles overall look kind of low, but we get a lot of really good positive answers. It's the, sa it's the same process there of getting those patients from uh, the next best possible answer to the best possible answer. We're not getting a lot of negative feedback about emergency departments. All right, employee engagement. Earlier this summer, uh, everybody took the annual employee engagement survey, right? Well, I'll say everybody, just about everybody. We had pretty good participation. I think we were in the 70, 80% range. Uh, a couple of questions that we really hone in on there. Uh, as an organization, if we're looking overall, one is overall satisfaction. Again, we're looking at the best possible answers here. And lots of people, you go, about 33% of you strongly agree you were overall satisfied with us. Livingston, 41%, and Augustine, 71%. And then another question on the survey, as an organization that we really are honing in on, is that intent to stay question. And I think it says something about intent to stay with the organization at least you know three years or longer. We want to get to the 75th percentile there. These are percentages of uh, top box answers that are reflected here, but Lofkin was at 43%, uh, Livingston 47%, and St. Augustine 69%. Intent to stay is important for a, a good reason. That's a, a good reason we're looking at those responses to that particular question. As we're on this journey of trying to get to the 75th percentile and all these other categories, and becoming a highly reliable organization, having zero harm to our patients, meeting our patients' expectations every time they come into the organization, that takes a body of work that's very consistent. If we have a lot of staff turnover, uh, it gets really hard to retrain everybody and get everybody else new that comes into the, or, into the organization on board with that culture quickly to keep us moving in that direction, all right? So we're gonna have a lot of focus and attention uh, an effort towards intent to stay with the, all, of our, or all of our facilities uh, over the coming year. Uh, the poll survey that we just took a couple weeks ago, here's the results of what we found there. There were six questions on that survey. About 56% of you here in Lufkin uh, completed that survey. We had 100% participation uh, in Livingston and St. Augustine. Uh, again, looking down here to working with the organization uh, over the next three years. We dropped just a little bit. All right, at all three of our facilities, those top box best possible answers, the percentage of those responses reduced uh, between here, Lufkin, and Livingston. Here, wait, here, Livingston, and St. Augustine. Excuse me. All right, so a couple of things that we're trying to put in place uh, over this next year as it relates to that. When that big annual survey came out, uh, we're able to pull out of that uh, by work group, by department, you know, sort of. The, I don't want to say performance, but how folks in those specific work groups and departments responded to the survey questions. We're asking all of the department directors, unit leaders, managers to identify two or three areas from those responses for your specific area and say, what are our opportunities? Where are some things that we need to focus on as a group that are going to make our, our employees more likely to, to, to be engaged and be happy working here? We know that people that work in healthcare generally love their jobs. They love what they do. It's a vocation, it's a calling, uh, and they feel very strong about what they do for a living. We want you to really love doing what you do here, okay? And that's the goal. 
We're also asking everybody to identify a couple of what we're called, they're called KPIs, key performance indicators. We also believe that of all these top uh, big goals that we have for the organization, these 75th percentile goals, that there is something everybody in this room, all across the organization, can do to help the organization achieve those results. All right? The key performance indicator is sort of a trickle down, so we're trying to get to the 75th percentile for quality. Right? One of the things that we're looking at under quality is uh, mortality. One of the things that's under mortality is sepsis present on admission mortality. So we're working with Miguel in the imaging department, and one of the things that Miguel said that they could do was look at, for these sepsis patients, sometimes they need an x-ray. If they need an x-ray, we're going to get it done in 30 minutes. We're going to measure that and be accountable for that, and that's going to be their um, effort towards helping the organization overall be successful with mortality. On a nursing unit, one of the things that we struggle with across the organization is discharge information. The patient's perception that they were really prepared to leave the organization whenever uh, their stay was over. So we can look at, we can drill down by unit, the response to the discharge information question on the survey. Okay, so that might be a KPI for that unit. We're trying to reduce hospital acquired infections. We measure uh, hand washing compliance all across the organization. So that could be a KPI for that particular department that can help the hospital achieve its results overall. All right? So we can all be in this together. Being in the 75th percentile sounds big. You'll hear people say, we can't do it because it's just too hard. I don't believe that at all. It's rubbish, okay? <laughs> There's a great group of people that work here. If we set our minds to it, we can absolutely accomplish it. Being in the 75th percentile just means you're better than one in four hospitals, right? Don't we think we can be better than one in four hospitals, right? Okay. So we'll, we'll, you'll continue to hear more about this. This, again, is a very high-level uh, overview. Uh, and we'll give you more detail how we're performing as the year progresses. Thank you. Sir, all right, clicker. All right, real quick, just to dovetail what you said. Hey, Sean, do you hear that? All right, real quickly, on, as it relates to quality and safety, Eric mentioned sepsis. Why is it important for us to focus on sepsis? Kills people. Say it loud, Joy. It kills people. It kills people. People die when they become septic. Okay? We know that if we identify it early, the chances of mortality, and we deploy our bundle, it goes way down, right? Likewise, if we don't identify it early and look to take care of it, the chances of somebody dying goes way up. We want to get to the 75th percentile. This is not about checking boxes. It's not. It's about keeping people from harm in our facility, all right? We're going to focus on two words, ad nauseum, in our organization. And here they are, ready? Zero harm. We don't want to be hurting people in our organization. None of us in here, ourselves or with our loved ones, want to go into our hospital or hospitals and think that we could get harmed, right? So I want you thinking about that, zero harm. Okay, all right, quickly gonna move. Don't do that, it's not there. All right, operational effectiveness. Uh, there's a slide that's gonna come up here in just a minute, uh, and I'm just gonna summarize it for you. It gives our financial results, okay? Uh, I call it the Christmas tree slide. For anybody that's been in one of these forums before, you would have seen it. Uh, some of you may be new. Basically, it shows you how we did in the month of September, as well as how we did year to date. Um, just quickly, we're about even relative to our volumes as to where we were last year. Uh, the, the slide will actually show that it's a, uh, some, some uh, red arrows on there, but the numbers are really not that big, okay? Uh, in fact, the month of September was a challenging month for us. How many of you know the number of working days in the month of September? No, it's not 30. Working days, like normal weekdays. Because that's when we do most of our business, right? 
20, Joyce says 22. No, it was 19. 19 working days. How many working days in the month of October? 23. And it makes a difference. Right? 19 working days versus 23 working days makes a difference. And we didn't, we had a, a one more working day in the month of September last year. So those are kind of things that can impact these numbers. All right? And then the last one was just on straight EBITDA or uh, uh, earnings before uh, depreciation and amortization. We, year to date, we're at about 10 million, just over 10 million. Uh, year to date, which is a, a, a big number. It's up here. Oh, well, there's the number. So um, we got a nice gift in the month of September. Uh, from some old, uh, we call them 1115 waiver dollars, I'm not going to get into it, it's about $7 million. So it was a nice uh, one-time gift that we got uh, coming to us. I say gift, we, we earned it, but it was uh, late, late coming to us. So we're not going to have that necessarily going forward. If you normalize to take out all the noise and the one-time gifts, we're ahead of our, uh, where we were prior year by about a million dollars. Okay? So we're making improvements, but we're not yet where we need to be. All right? Okay. Heather, come on up. Benefits. Benefits. The excitement of benefits. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so how many people have heard of CHI Connect? All right. Good showing of hands. Good showing of hands. So we will be moving to CHI Connect on December 16th. And there's a lot of moving parts. There's some finance parts, some HR parts. Um, some supply chain parts that will be coming with this. Today our focus is going to be on the HR parts. We're going to talk about the benefits and some of the um, gains that we're going to get through them. Now again, lots of information is going to be coming. If you think of anything today, we're going to be here, the whole entire HR team. We can answer questions after. If you have like that private question like, hey, I just want to ask you something, didn't want to ask me, we're going to stay after. And just know as we go through this whole process, we'll be there to help you enroll and make sure everything, because sometimes when things look different, it can seem very confusing. So don't be frightened. Ask the questions and know that we'll be here to help you guys. Okay. CHI Connect. What we're going to cover today, what is CHI Connect? Why are we connecting? System overview, benefits overview, go light dates and implementation timeline, tools and resources, what we need from you, because there will be an ask at the end, and questions and answers. Okay, here's our technical textbook answer of what CHI Connect is. It's a consistent integrated information technology backbone across essential business systems. Transaction processing is moved into shared service operations that allow for functional teams to transform into strategic business partners. So what does that mean for us? We're going to be moving from ADP platform that I think everyone's pretty familiar with and we'll be going to the Workday platform. How many people love to shop on Amazon? How many people love that little thing on your phone where you just click it and it comes right to your house in a few days? It's like one click. So this, this is going to be, see I saw your smile over there. You, you like it too as much as me. Click, click. You're like, oh, I ordered something. Um, but this is going to be as simple as that. It's got a lot of the same type of feels as Amazon. It's a lot of clicking and it's a lot of self-service. So sometimes, you know, especially if you're on the night shift or maybe it's Saturday and you're like, I want to change some things. You can go on, you can change your benefits, you can change, not your benefits, sorry. Strike that, not your benefits, but you can change your W-4 deduction and you can look at your pay stubs. You can look at a lot of different things and have access to things there. Okay, why are we connecting? We want to standardize our process, so we're going to align to the CHI um, standards, practices, and we've already uh, um, actually adopted quite a few of the policies already. So this is kind of more of just getting on the same platform. We're going to leverage CHI buying power, centralize where it makes sense for efficiencies, Offer um, there's an offer of support center model, so sometimes there's like five of us in HR and sometimes we're all running around at different places. If you just have that quick question, there's going to be a 1844 number, so if you have a cool red pin or a magnet, you can go ahead and that's where the number is, so it's Ed, Ed E's with you there. And if you didn't get a pin or magnet, there's some more in the back on your way out, you can grab one. Okay. Okay, what's included in RCHI Connect this time? Human resources, <coughs> payroll, financial systems, and time in attendance. Question? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. I was going to stop if there was a question there. Okay. So human resources. Phone and online resources for managers and employees. Again, there's going to be a lot of online resources. Um, an 844 number that you can call if you can't get one of us at that point in time. <coughs> Benefits and policy standardization. Standard recruiting tool, which we're already on. 
Um, the system-wide HR platform for training and development. We will be going from HealthStream to the Knowledge Hub. Did I say that right, Chelsea? Um, so that the training all that will look a little different on that in January and standardized titles and job descriptions. So you know, Regina and um, the HR team did a lot of work about three years ago aligning a lot of our job titles. So we're not going to be impacted by some of our sister facilities um, as much. You know, it's like instead of saying X Y Z, it says X Y Z A. So all of them say really same. So there's no dramatic changes at that point in time. Okay, payroll. Standardize um, pay periods, which we're already on. Online access to pay information, which you get it in ADP right now. Now you're just going to go ahead and get it in Workday. And then easy direct deposit management. Okay, the sports and auto. They are open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to um, 7 p.m. And again, it's just kind of when you call any support center, like a call center, they're there to help. But when you get onto Workday and you get onto your Inside CHI account, you can also email them questions. There's a lot of videos you can watch if you're looking for some information at that point. Okay. If you take nothing else today, nothing else, you zone out the rest of the time I talk, like my children do, December 17th is an active enrollment. So what does that mean? You have to enroll in benefits. You've got to go on, you've got to click on things, and you've got to enroll. Print out your confirmation of your benefits. Because if you don't do that, you have to wait an entire year to be benefit eligible. So December 17th to January 14th. But here's a little hint. You're going to want to enroll in your benefits the first week that they're out. Because if we don't get you enrolled in benefits, then your second paycheck is going to take a double deduction. So for example, if your benefits cost you $200 um, a pay period, it will $400 will come out your second check. And again, the same money in totality, it just feels good to have a double deduction come out of your check. So we really, our goal is to get everyone enrolled that we can the first week. So your paycheck, your first paycheck would go into CHI Connect feels good, looks good, and there's not the discrepancies there. And again, you must enroll. So kind of where if you forgot to enroll, Regina could work some magic, get you through and get you in there. Unfortunately, we won't have that back end access, so we won't be able to work any like magic at that point in time. Okay. So what day do we all enroll? <laughs> okay, awesome, thank you. And if we don't enroll, <laughs> no benefits. Yeah, we gotta, gotta, gotta. Okay. All right. Benefit eligibility. Um, to be considered full time, you need to work 36 hours a week. To be considered part time, you need to work 20 hours a week. Um, your leaders and your departments have gone and worked with um, human resources. We've looked at people, made sure everyone is classified, so there should be no surprises for anyone that, oh, I'm not full time. Everyone is um, placed where they should be and um, all of that good stuff. Okay, benefit options. We've got medical plans, we've got dental, and we've got vision. Probably the biggest change in medical is we're gonna be moving from Blue Cross Blue Shield and we will be going to Cigna. And some of it's gonna look a little different, um, how we earn our health and wellness. You know how we go on the Blue Cross Blue Shield right now and sign like, hi, we're healthy? We're actually gonna have to do some things and we'll talk about that further in a few slides here. Um, dental plan, you're going to have some choices. Do you want to pay more bi-weekly? And then every time you go to the dentist, pay less or pay a little less each week and pay more if you have to use the dentist. Okay? Okay, medical benefits. This is in your packet. This is not an eye test, I promise. If you go through your packet, there, it's a breakdown. So you have everything in there. Again, and it just talks about the plans that are there. One thing I want to do is um, recognize Monty and Eric, um, some of our friends that have gone to CHI National Biz, um, Benefits already, some of our physicians that weren't wrapped, if they weren't in our CIN, we were able to go ahead and get everyone wrapped in the signal, so we won't face some of the challenges that our friends that early adopted took. Okay. Oops, oops, going too far back. So you can see where some of the benefits, this is the deductions if you go. So if you're single, where you had currently $1,000, it's now zero. If you're a full family, it was $2,200 to make it. It's now zero. Uh, another benefit is, um, where did we go? Um, ambulance coverage is covered at 100%, so God forbid you have to use the ambulance. 
you can go ahead and be covered at 100% though. I'm sorry? Airplane. Airplane. If you got air foam? Okay. If you choose, we would have to, I do not know that one. So the, oh, I gotta be better at this. So the question was, if you have to take an air ambulance, we would, I have to research that one that is not on there, but I can look at the policy summary and get that back to you. It says medically necessary as 100% There you go. Okay. All right. So medical plans coming. So here are, here are what the rates are. So we go ahead and look at the integrated health plan. Full family right now costs about $280 a pay period. That's with the healthy benefit option. So it will be reduced to bi-weekly to $240 at that point. Now in addition on that, how do I earn my healthy discount, my wellness discount? You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do things. So if we utilize me, for example, I'm an insulin dependent diabetic, and so I have to, they always want me to talk to their dietitians, they want me to read about things, they want me to lower my A1C. So I would go ahead and begin year and find those things, and I can go online and read their um, thing, talk about my diabetes, and I can earn gift cards for that. So there's a sheet in your packet that talks about what type of gift cards that you can earn. One of the other big things that they do is Fitbit, Apple Watches, they'll have a step challenge. And it's really easy stuff. So it's like, can you do up 10,000 steps this month? Well, most of you on the floor probably had 10,000 steps by noon. So you would go ahead and um, you go ahead and you earn, I think it's $10 or $20 gift card on that. So you have the potential to earn up to $450 each year of gift cards. Now, if you're on full family and your spouse is on it, they also have the option to participate in these challenges and webinars and earn a $450. So in essence, your bi-weekly is going down to $40 and you can earn an additional $900 a year for full family. Okay. Now, employee only single, that at that point in time without the health and wellness benefits prior, it was $69 for us. So it's going to 66, and then the same principle would apply that you can um, earn up to $450 a year. Okay. So prescription, who loves playing that $250 deductible each year? No. Um, <laughs> and each year I struggle with it. So that, um, that piece of the policy will be going away. So there will be no deductible for your um, pharmaceutical pieces. Okay. Oh, sorry. I thought there was a question. Um, okay, so that will be going away. One of, the new, one of the new elements that will be coming for the prescription is mail order. So if you have maintenance drugs, so again, we'll use me as an example. So like my insulin, every three months um, I have to get some more insulin cartridges. And so what happens is they either, by mail order, they're shipped to my house every three months, they come from the pharmacy and they just arrive in a cooler at my house. So if you have, let's say, like hypertension medication, anything you take like on a monthly, daily basis will have to be ordered through the mail order. Don't be frightened. We will have lots and lots of meetings in January to help you enroll in that. One thing you can do though to get in front of it is start calling your physician and say, hey, listen, we're going to do benefits. I'm going to need a prescription for my maintenance drugs for three months. Okay. So, and, um, all right, totally asked my train thought. So, we'll go ahead and so then we'll help you enroll in that. But if you have maintenance, reach out to your physician and say, hey, listen, I'm probably going to need a new prescription at that point in time. And then they can order it for three months on that period there. Now, you're probably wondering, what if my kid, what if I have an ear infection and I need to get an antibiotic? You can still go ahead and you'll be go to the CVS and you can drop off your script and get your antibiotic. You have to use CVS. That is the preferred vendor. You can go, that's the in-network vendor. You can go out and use any, any pharmacy that you want, but that's the preferred in-network vendor. So we'll pay this money. Correct, yes. Yes. <laughs> Or going to pay more going to other places. Yes. So the question yeah, is, if you don't use in-network, if you go out of network, whether it be medical, dental, vision, prescription, and I think we've all operated this, if you go out of network, you will have a higher deductible on that. Um, and again, it's just, you know, economical. They try to steer to where they have the contract. Okay. All right. Dental benefits. So here are our options, and you can kind of see what I had illustrated before. If you go the CHIPPO option, MetLife, 
you have a 10% um, after um, the deductible for restoration. And then if you go and you pay less each week, you can go to a 50%. So again, it's however you use um, you know, your health care. Some people are very, very, very healthy and they're like, I'm going to find the, like, the least or cheapest that I have to do just in case. And some people are high maintenance. Um, that are frequent users of the medical plan, and you know what? I'm going to pay less by week, uh, more by week, so I have to pay less every time I have to go to the physician. Whoops. All right. So then there's just a comparison of the plans, and that again is in your packet. You can say like, hey, what do I have right now? What are those pieces looking like? Again, and just something to highlight here: orthodontics is we were providing a thousand dollars. It's going to move to fifteen hundred if you go to the PPO plan. Okay, so dental, you can kind of see the difference here. So if you look at the singles, um, the lower deductions, it's $18.35 biweekly, and then the higher deductions, the biweekly paycheck is $12.88. So you can kind of just see the quick comparison there. And again, that's in your packet also. Okay, vision. Currently, what, where we are right now, as you were paying $10 every time you went to go get an eye, Exam, now it will move to zero dollars. Um, currently, right now, it's $25 for bifocal singles. It's going to move to a $15 copay. So definitely some benefits and gains there also. All right, you can see the vision plan. So full family was about $13, I think 74 cents. Bi-weekly, it's going to move to $10. And employee only, we're only saving five cents. But it will move down to $3.74. Okay, who wants to retire? <laughs> so we are going to be moving from Lincoln and we're going to be moving to Fidelity. So this is one of those items in Workday. When you go into your Inside CHI and go into Workday, you will be able to access your Fidelity account from there. You click on it, it will say you're leaving this secure page and going here, and you can monitor and see how your investments are doing. Um, what we don't know yet, and we have the attorneys working on, is can we take our Lincoln money and move it fidel to Fidelity? We're not, we don't have a clear line of sight on that right now. But how the employer contribution is done is going to change up a little bit. So currently, it's based on how long you've worked here, and the longer you worked here, you get a higher um, percentage, a higher match. But we're going to move to a different where everyone becomes eligible and it's the same match. Now, what's interesting about this plan, it also has a true up at the end of the year of 2.5% you're eligible for. Um, so, in overall, if you take this, and there's a nice little formula so you can personally figure out what yours, it's a higher match rate for everyone that um, participates here. Now, this won't be the only thing you guys have to learn and just try to figure out with your retirement. Lincoln will be here to kind of talk about your accounts, what you can take over. <coughs> Fidelity is going to be here on site, and they have been really gracious, and they're like, we will come nights, we will come days, weekends, they will do what we need to do. So you can set up an appointment to meet with a Fidelity rep and go through like, hey, I'm at X, I need to get to Y to retire, how do I get there? And they're going to help you figure that piece out on an individual basis. But at this point, we don't know about our 403B, if we're going to be able to roll it over. We don't know that yet. I'm hoping so by... We, I'm sorry? No, go ahead. No, no, no. So we're just kind of... You have an estimation. Will we know by the time we switch over? Oh, yes. Okay, so let me... I'm getting better at this. Let me repeat the question. So the question is, when will we know if we're going to be able to switch the money from the 403B over to the 401K? So right at the moment, we're hoping, we have a call later today, I'm hoping to get like greater line of sight today or tomorrow um, of what, what's going to happen with it. Or does it just continue without being able to uh, contribute to? So yeah, if, if we can't move it over, it will stay there and you know continue to earn its interest and everything of that. But we should have, I don't want to speak out of turn or say what's going to happen, we really should have a better line of sight and some more communication coming out on that. We're just waiting for them to all figure out the IRS guidelines books like that big. So they just need to figure out what we can and can't do. Okay. Okay. Yep. So is 6% the, the top for the match? Yes. Six so the that question is up to 6%. Yes. Yeah. So the question was on the, um, the 6% match, and that is, but they also have the 2.5 that you will receive in March um, of the true up also. So it's it's a... Fidelity is going to go over it in much more detail of that piece. Okay. 
Loans. So one of the questions also that's come up is loans. If I have a loan with Lincoln, what does that look like? At this point in time, we're finalizing if you're going to be able to carry the loan over to Fidelity, or if you have a loan with Lincoln, if they'll put you like on a payment plan and you'll just pay them directly to pay that piece back. Okay, other benefits. How many students we have? Okay, so full-time students, we will be moving from $3,000 to $5,250 in annual reimbursement. So this is very positive. Our um, part-time friends, they're going to move to $2,625, and it will be administered through ECOR. Um, so what that is, is if you go onto your Inside CHI, you'll go onto the ECOR, and you can just upload your stuff there, and they're going to catch you, um, catch you a check. Okay. So short-term disability and long-term disability. This is another gain that we're going to be receiving. So our current short-term um, disability payment is you've had to, um, you know, obviously the waiting eligible period is nine days, 90 days, sorry. Um, wait period before, it used to be 28 days. So you've had to be out basically for a month and utilize your PTO time to supplement your income. This only has a one week. So as long as you're out, you can, you know, let's say you're off 0.9 and you work 36 hours, you work 36, you utilize 36 hours of your PTO time, and then you would go ahead and you're eligible for 60% versus prior 50% for up to 26 weeks. So prior it was a cliff, so it depended again on how long you worked here. Sometimes you could earn four weeks, sometimes it was 10 weeks, sometimes it was 12 weeks. It just depended on how long. But here, once you've worked for 90 days and, you know, God forbid something happens to you at that point in time, you have a seven-day waiting period and then 60% for 26 weeks. Then long-term um, disability. It used to be that you had to pay 50% of the plan and CHI paid the other 50. Now CHI will be picking up and paying the entire plan and you're eligible at 108. 181 days. So basically what happens is, God forbid something happens to you, for 26 weeks, that's the wait period to get to long-term disability, you will receive 60% of your pay. And you only have to use one week of PTO, which is your wait period. So it's a much more robust plan. Okay, healthcare assistant program. This is a new element. So this is for individuals um, that hit a certain um, um, econ um, economic piece, and it's used for, they will get a card, and if you meet the requirements of it, and it's helped to defer some of the costs. So when you go to the doctor's office, when you get prescriptions, when you go to get eyeglasses, and you might you potentially can be eligible up for three thousand five hundred annually. And again, it's to support out-of-pocket medical expenses, and you need to be full-time. So this week and last week, you would be getting information in the mail if you were potentially eligible for this. Okay. Whoops. Whoops. Wellness. I think we talked a lot about wellness. You know, you're going to earn it instead of signing it off before during open enrollment. You're going to earn these elements throughout the year. And again, there's also what's going to call perks. And you can go ahead and you can get discounts on car rentals and vacations. There's just a lot of um, different things that you can get up there. Now, the ask from us, and Regina, keep me honest so I say this right, mm -hmm. is we need every single person to go onto their email and check their email out and make sure it works. You also need to check out your AD account. The best way we can do this is to go on and see if you can log into Kronos. If you can't, we need you, I already got a head shake, nope. We need you to call the National Help Desk and log a ticket, send that ticket number to Regina and myself. We've um, trying to shepherd these pieces through National right now because that's going to prevent you from being able or to have a smooth transition from um, going to CHI workdays. So we need to make sure those accounts are working. Okay. 